Good evening, everyone. And you're wondering why is there only one person on the screen? It's because we have our lesson that's going to be brought to you uh, via a video that's already been recorded by the speaker tonight. Uh, this is the only way that he could do it, and that's understandable. And our speaker tonight is going to be Brother James R. Turner, Jr. And uh, he's a graduate of the Tri-Cities School of Preaching uh, in Elizabeth, in Tennessee. And uh, he works with the Limestone, is it a Lone Star or Limestone? I can't remember. I think it's Limestone Church of Christ. And uh, I know he will, he's going to do an excellent job in this video that he has for us. Uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Do all those different things that you want me to do for the um, sessions. And just like the regular Connect sessions, we will have a prayer at the end of the uh, service. Of the service end of the session tonight so if you want to put them in the chats in the, in the chat uh we will i will try to uh pin those to uh pray at the end and uh without further ado i am going to put uh his video up and we'll begin with his lesson again he is james r turner jr and he is not related to rex turner uh senior the one who established the uh faulkner university i believe it is um but here is his video please give him your undivided attention and uh hope you enjoy this lesson tonight take time to be holy speak off with our lord abiding in him always and feed on his word as we think about for a moment about being holy for God. We, I, th I sometimes ponder in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, where Peter says, as he is referring, as he is thinking back what Moses had written about being holy, where he says, For it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy, referring to God. God being the most holy of, of us all. And as God is holy, we ought to us to be holy. So I urge you to join us get your bibles get a friend as we study god's beautiful word on being holy and as we are being holy think for back for a moment how is our prayer life is our prayer life where it ought to be as we are talking to god almighty on a everyday basis we're going to look at what paul says in first timothy 2 8 as we think about for a moment of talking to God, our prayer life. In fact, Paul says this in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Paul tells Timothy this, I will, Paul says, therefore, that men uh, everywhere, not just some men here, some men there, but all men everywhere, what would you do? Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. I notice, as we pray to God, we are to pray without anger. We are to pray without doubt because God, the loving God that we know, will answer our prayers. We might not like what he says, but God knows best. And Paul again in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, what did he say? Pray. Pray without ceasing. As we pray without ceasing, what does that mean, Paul? Always have our mind on prayer. When we are sad, pray to God. When we are angry, pray to God. When we are joyful, pray to God. Oh, how beautiful it is to be able to stand before God and pray to Him. We have Him talking to us through His Word, and we are able to talk with Him by means of prayer. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. In another instance, as we talk, as we pray to God, opening up, your, opening up your God's word to First Corinthians. First Corinthians, as we see in First Corinthians chapter fourteen and verse fifteen, Paul says this to the Corinthians in his letter, First Corinthians fourteen fifteen. He says, "What is it then?" He says, "I, Paul, will pray with the Spirit. I, Paul, will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with understanding." Also, I'm going to pray with my heart. I'm going to understand what I'm going to pray as we talk to God. 
in reverse row and singing songs of praises to God. He reverses and says, I will also sing with the Spirit. As we sing to God, we are to sing to God with the Spirit. As we sing to God, we must also, as we do pray, sing with understanding also. As we sing, as we pray, let us always be grateful for what we have. So again, a question that we have for us all. How is our prayer life? Is it where it ought to be? You know, in Psalms chapter in Psalms chapter fifty five and verse seventeen, Psalm fifty five verse seventeen, listen to this. The psalmist said the psalmist writer says, Evening, nighttime, morning, I get up. And noon, the afternoon time as we get ready to enjoy lunch with our family friends. And as we see the evening upon us, as we wake up in the morning, and as we are sitting down with family in the afternoon, he says, the psalmist says this, Will I pray? I don't know about you, my friends, but the psalmist got it right. Morning, noon, and the evening, I will pray. I will cry aloud. And guess what the psalmist says? And he shall hear my voice. God will hear our voice voice no matter if it's morning time we wake up no matter if it's in the afternoon time we're just basically getting ready to go and the evening time getting ready for bed i will pray and god will hear my voice i don't know about you but as we are holy to god we are to always have our minds and to talk with god on an everyday basis morning noon and evening i will pray and as we are holy, praying to God, we're instance, how about feeding on His Word? When we are holy, are we wanting to digest God's Word? Are we wanting to read God's Word and obey what God's Word has to say? I certainly hope so. As we are feeding on His Word, listen to what the psalmist says here. In Psalms 19.10, in Psalms 19.10, God's word, as the psalmist is speaking, is writing, being inspired by the Holy Spirit. We read this. More to be desired. God's word. What is it? It is more to be desired than our fine gold. Yet than much fine gold. I see here that God's word is more to be desired than anything beautiful. Gold, perhaps. And he says this. God's word, and I just fine gold but it is also desire sweeter god's word is sweet then also then honeycomb or honey and a honey comb honey is sweet but guess what god's word is indeed sweeter not as we think about that god's word is sweet so are we feeding are we digesting what God has to say as he is talking to us through his word. In the book of Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 7. Listen to what God's word says. Notice this. As Moses is penning these things. In Exodus 24 verse 7 says. And he took the book of the covenant. He took the book of the covenant. And guess what they did? They read. And read in the audience of the people. And guess what? And they said, All the Lord has said that we do and be obedient. What a great way to live. What God's word says, we will do. What God's word says, we will be obedient. What a beautiful way to go. In fact, not only that, but Joshua chapter 8. In Joshua chapter 8, about verse 30, we read, we're there to read all these beautiful words. In Joshua 8, I'll go ahead and read out of God's word as well. Beautiful words indeed. Joshua chapter 8, verse 30. Listen to this. Then Joshua, what did he do? He built an altar. He built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel and Mount Ebo. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel. So, Moses, God commanded Moses, the children of Israel, 
are to do what God says. As it is written in the book of the law of Moses, was written, an altar of whole stone, of which no man had lift up any iron, and they offered thereon burnt offering unto the Lord, and sacrificed peace offering. They obey God. Look at the verse, next verse. And he wrote there upon the stone a copy of the law of God. As they wrote a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. And all Israel and their elders, notice other people that's going to be there. We have Israelites. We have the elders. We have officers. We have judges. They stood on the side of the ark. And on the side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well the stranger as that was born among them, half of them against Mount Gerizim, and half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterwards, notice verse 34. He read all the words of the law, the blessings, and the cursings to all that is written in the book of the law. Verse 35, listen to this. There was not a word. So he had to read all of it. Not a word, Joshua says, of all that Moses commanded was Joshua. Notice Joshua read. Joshua read not before all the congregation. So Joshua read all these words before all the congregation of Israel with the women was there, the little ones. And I also noticed this, strangers that were convert among them. I don't know about you, but we see a beautiful picture of God's word being written among all men, women, little children, men, strangers, officers. It's so beautiful as we see God's word being read and, and what most importantly, I want us to look at Luke, uh, Jesus, in Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Not just Joshua read from the law about Moses, but Mark, Luke chapter 4, verse 16. We have a man named Jesus. The Son of God also read out of God's beautiful book. How fascinating to know. We even have deity reading out of the word of God. A word of God that is sweeter also than honey. And a honey gone. A word of God that ought to be more desired. Than any gold that is found upon this earth. In Luke chapter 4 if you will verse 16. Luke 4 verse 16. We scroll all the way down. Listen to what God's word says here. And he came to Nazareth. Where he had been brought up. This is again Luke 4, 16. And that his customs was. And he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And guess what Jesus did? The Jesus stood up. Jesus didn't sit down. Jesus stood up before the congregation. And he read. And he, he read. And, th and there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So we have Isaiah delivered to Jesus and Jesus opened up the book of the law opened up the book and he found a place where it is written in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah he reads this the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set a, at liberty them that are bruised, to reach the acceptance year of the Lord. Then we have Jesus, verse 20. He closed the book. He gave it back again to the minister, and he sat down. And all the eyes, and the eyes of them that were in the synagogue, were fastened on Jesus. And he began to say to them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. How beautiful to see. Not only just Joshua read the law, but we have Jesus reading out of the book of Isaiah in the synagogues before all the ears that is willing to listen. We see, what did Jesus do? 
a great example, he read God's word. Feed on his word. As he is, as we all know, the greatest holy man that ever lived, that ever walked on the face of this earth. And as we do so, Paul, as he's directed Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.13, Paul says this, Till I come, Timothy, Timothy, in 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, Timothy, give attendance to what? To reading. Give attendance to reading. Give attendance to exhortation. Give attendance to... Uh, Doctrine, Timothy, feed on his word. As we have to be feed on his word, question I have for us today is, are we hungry? Are you hungry for God's word? I certainly hope you're hungry. I certainly we all are hungry that we want more to desire God's word each and every day. And as we read God's word, we think about where Jesus himself, and as he is preaching on and be and the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 as well, as preaching on the Sermon on the Mount, as, um, 5 through 8, he says this. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are they that which do hunger. Oh, I am so hungry. Jesus says, Blessed are they which do hunger. Blessed are they not just do hunger, but blessed are they that is thirsty after, not food, but righteousness. Why? For they shall be filled. Blessed are those who hunger for God's word. Blessed are those who is thirsty for God's word. For they shall be filled. How great to know we got God's word in our grasp. That we can listen to it. That we can obey it. And we can learn how to be holy for God. And as we ought to be holy for God. Then we ought to be seekers of God. We are to be the most holiest people on the face of this earth. As we are doing what? Seeking God. Matthew chapter 13 verse 45. Matthew chapter 13 verse 45 we read about the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus, as he is talking about a parable here, he says about the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man. And this merchant man is seeking Gertie Pearl. So do you know what he did? He he goes out, he seeks it. Who, When he had found that one pearl of great price, he sowed all that he had. He sold all that he had. He had found this pearl. He found it for a great price. So he gets all he can to buy that pearl. So you know what this merchant man does? He sold all that he had. And he bought that precious pearl. The church today. Are we willing to give up all that we have to seek God? Are we going to seek that God and give up all that we have? Where Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. Seeking God equals following seeking God equals following Jesus equals following his word. Jesus says in John fourteen fifteen, if you love me, what do we do? Keep his commandments. And we know that his commandments is not grievous, as John records. So as he's not grievous, I want us to look at some examples of seekers of God. Nicodemus. The man named Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 1 and following, a man that had questions and that came to Jesus by night asking him about being born again. And notice this here. This is, it says, There was a man, a Pharisee, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jew. And what did he do? He came to Jesus by night and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God, for no man can do these miracles except thou, uh, except that thou do is except God be with him. Notice this. Nicodemus was seeking God as he seek God by night. How about the Ethiopian eunuch? He, as he was reading the book of Isaiah, 
we see in Acts chapter 8, a man that was reading God's word, wanting to know what's going on, uh, um, as, as he was reading, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 53, in Acts chapter 8, this Ethiopian, this noble man upon all nobles, uh, from Queen Candace, in verse 30, Philip, what did he, Philip do? Philip ran there to him, and he heard this Ethiopian nobleman reading God's word. He was seeking God. He was feeding on God's word. He wanted to know what to do. And we see where Isaiah told him, uh, where we see in verse 31, as Philip ran to him, and tell him, we'll understand what thou readest. And this man says this, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Pharaoh that he should come. Come, Philip, and sit with him. And as they read verse 32, the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb, dumb before his so opened up his mouth. And his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. He shall declare his generation for Life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, who speaketh the prophet of this or some other man? So this Ethiopian nobleman, he was seeking the truth. He was feeding on, and they were feeding on God's word. And we see where Philip, verse 35, Philip opened his mouth. And what did he do? He began to preach Jesus to them. As he preached Jesus to them, how about Acts chapter 10? Acts chapter 10, a few chapters over here, we read a man named Cornelius. A man that had a lot under him being a satarian. And Acts chapter 10, a man, he's a Gentile. And as this Gentile, we read about him as, as called Cornelius, a satarian of the band called the Italian band. In verse 2, his, this man was a devout man. And with one of the feared God with all his house. He gave much alms to the people. And guess what he did? He prayed to God. Not sometimes. But he prayed to God always. As Paul said, we ought to pray to God. Always lifting up holy hands. This man was seeking God. And God answered his prayers. As we read further down. Where Peter came to Cornelius. Peter taught the truth, and Cornelius in his household was then saved, being baptized. How beautiful we read about Cornelius. And as we think about Cornelius seeking God, how about the Bereans in Acts chapter 17? The, Berean, the Bereans, as uh, God's word said, they were noble. In 17 verse 11, we read, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They were feeding on God's word. They were seeking God's word. They were being holy as they were the most noble than those in Thessalonica, where they searched the scriptures daily, not just sometimes, but daily. They opened up God's word. They searched it. They see what they ought to do to, to remain, to obtain, to be holy. And as they done so, were these things were so. We see the Bereans were one of the most holiest people, more holy than those in the Sinaica, as they searched the scriptures daily. As we see seekers of God and examples, we go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, and we read this in verse 20, Paul. I see he's talking with the Philippi, Philippi here. And Philippians 3 verse 20, he says, For our conversation is where? In heaven. Our conversation is in heaven. For whence also we do what? We are looking for a Savior. And guess who our Savior is? The Lord Jesus Christ. We are, as, as the Ethiopian did, he seek to find out who this man talking about in Isaiah 53. And Philip taught him Jesus. We too ought to seek Jesus. If you have not yet seek Jesus, we then are not to, we are then not holy as we ought to help be holy. And perhaps we are lost if you are not obedient to what God's word has to say. And 
question that we have for you again is who are you seeking? Are we praying to God as we ought to? Are we feeding on his word? And who are we seeking? In Matthew chapter 6, and verse 33, Jesus, um, as he is continued preaching the Sermon on the Mount, he says, But seek ye first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and not just the kingdom of God, the church, but all his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. And he goes on and says, And all these things shall be added unto you. As we said, blessed are those that is, thirst, is hunger and thirst has righteousness, for there is the kingdom of God. And as we are to be seekers of God, the most important thing that we are to do as we are to be holy again is to be humble. Are we being humble today? As we work with our friends or family, are we, are we being as five, Matthew 5, 16, are we being the light? Sounding the world of darkness. Are we being humble? Peter says in 1 Peter 5, 6, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that He might exalt you in due times. In verse 7, continues, He says, Casting all your cares upon Him. Why, Peter? Why must I do so? For He careth for you. As we are humble, we are to put God first. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. As we put God first as we are humble, James says in James 4, 6, that we are to, but he, give, he giveth more grace, whereby he said, God resisteth the proud. But what does he do about giving grace? But he giveth grace unto the humble. And when we read verse 7 of that in James chapter 4, continue, he says, Submit yourself therefore to God. As we seek God first, as we submit ourselves to God, guess what James says about the devil? As we submit to God, we then resist the devil. As we that resist the devil, we see that the devil did what, what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 4 when he was being tempted. The devil fled. So if we resist the devil, the Satan, the devil, will flee from you. And as he flees from you, verse 10, guess what James writer says? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. As, as God lifts us up, are we being humble as Christ is humble in Philippians chapter 2 in Philippians chapter 2 read, read about verse 1 in Philippians chapter 2 about verse 1 listen to what boss says here about Christ he says if there be any consolation in Christ if there's be any comfort in Christ if there's any comfort of love if any fellowship of uh, the Spirit, if any balls in mercy, fulfill ye my joy. Notice he continues, he says this, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strive or vainglory, but in lowliness of, of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but what to do, but every man on the things of others. Verse 5. Let this mind let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The most holiest man that walked on this earth. We see Jesus Christ, a man that opened up God's word. It read out of the book of Isaiah. A man that was going to be this and be crucified a a betrayer a friend that he caused them betraying from a kiss he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane alone but yet he humbled himself in the process he says about Jesus Paul says about Jesus above him Jesus as Jesus when it was who being in the form of God thought it robbery to not be equal with God. So what did Jesus do? 
he made himself of no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant. And he was made in likeness of man. And being found facing as a man, Jesus himself, he humbled himself. As he humbled himself, he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We see Jesus, the most humblest man led on the face of the earth. He became obedient unto death. We ought to be follow his example and be obedient to death. Revelation 2.10, as we are to remain faithful unto death, we are to remain obedient to death to receive that crown of life. And as we are that as we are to be humble as Christ, we ought to serve God above all else. Are we servants of God? I want you to listen, my friend, for just a brief moment. As we are to be servants of God, there's two apostles I want to talk about. First apostle is Peter. What do we know about Peter? Peter walked with God. He walked with Jesus. Jesus, Peter seen Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration with, with Enoch as Jesus was talking to him about his death or to come. And we see where Peter denied Jesus three times. We see Peter was then rebuked by Paul because of... He sat with the Jews, and when the Gentiles came in, he got up and went with the Jews, and the Jews followed. We see where Peter not only did that, he was not a perfect man, but yet he became an elder of the church. He was what he says, be, he was he did his best to be holy, as God says, for I am a Holy. In 1 Peter 1.15, we touched basis on this earlier when we started this to this evening. And he says, but, but as he what has called you is holy, God has called us holy through his beautiful word. As we live it, obey it. So be holy in all manner of conversation, all ways of life, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Peter goes on and says in 1 Peter 2.9 about us, as we our chosen generations. We, we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people that ye should so forth the praise of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. How indeed beautiful to know that God has called us out of darkness to follow him being in the light. And he says again in 1 Peter 4, 11, Peter goes on and says, For if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him be praise and dominion forever. Amen. I don't know about you, but Peter, he had mistakes. I guarantee you, I tell you, up front, that I am not perfect. I make mistakes just as Peter made mistakes. But yet, this one thing I can guarantee, I will serve God above than any man else that's on this earth. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. Peter says this unto the other apostles, and he answered and said, We ought to obey God. We ought to serve God rather than men. Today, our go, tomorrow, every day, is to serve God the best of our ability above all others. We go then to Paul. Paul in Acts chapter 20, verse 19, Paul says, serving the Lord. Now this man Paul, once as we know, was a persecutor of the church. Jesus came to him as he was on the road to Damascus, getting ready to persecute the church further. And as Ananias came, he became a Christian, calling the name of the Lord, Acts 22, verse 16. Then we see in 20, verse 19, he says, Serving the Lord with all humility of mind. That's our go. We are to serve God with the, the humility of our mind. And with many tears and temptation, we see Paul, he cried. He was tempted as we are, and would befell me by the lion wait to the Jews. We see the word in 
Acts 20 and 19, Paul was one that served the Lord. He goes on and says in Romans 6, 22, Romans 6, 22, But now, being made free from sin and became servants to God, ye have your fruit unto lowliness and the end everlasting life. And we go on, as we have that everlasting life, as we serve God, Paul then says in Galatians 1.10, For do I not persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? For if I please men, I should not be the servants of Christ. Two questions. Are we going to be servants of men and please them? Or are we going to be servants of God and please God? Well, Peter had it right. We ought to obey God rather than men. And, most, and one of the most beautiful aspects that we see is taken in Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 says, Where God recognizes his servants. Re Listen to this. God recognizes his servants. Malachi three sixteen. Then they that fear the Lord, they spake off one to another. The Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord that thought upon his name. Look at verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up the jewels. Notice what God's word says. They shall be mine, God says. They'll be mine in the day when I shall make up jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son. That, notice this, serveth him. Serves him. Verse 18 of Malachi 3. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not, or serveth him not. God and deeds recognize our own. And as God recognizes us, the question I have for you is, who are we serving? In the book of Psalms, Psalms 100 Psalm 100, listen to this before we close. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord. As we serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence. As we do so, serve the Lord with gladness before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us. And not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with things given and that his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Are we willing to serve God? Have we yet become a Christian? That we begin a life anew to serve God. As we hear the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And upon hearing the word of God, we have faith that we're going to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John 8, 24. Upon that obedient belief, we're to repent from our sins. Luke 13, 3. And as we repent from our sins, we are to then confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. And we confess with our mouth that we then ought to be baptized, become a Christian for remission of sins. Acts 2, 38. Once we do these beautiful things, let us remain faithful unto death to receive that crown of life that we can and become holy serving the Lord. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And may God bless you as we continue to serve Him. I gotta remind myself to un unmute myself when I start speaking. And uh, I appreciate his willingness to send that video over to, so that we can use for tonight. And, uh, and it, it reminded me of how beautiful God's word is and how we must be holy and seeking God, praying to God. And it's just, I, I, I think about something he said about having Jesus as our Lord, who are we serving? I said it before during our truth and love lesson 
that most people want Jesus as Savior, but they don't want him as, as the Lord of, his, of their life. They just want the Savior part, but omit the part that he should be their Lord. God has made this same Jesus both Lord and Christ, Acts 2.36. And so I hope that we all can take from the lesson that we've heard tonight and continually seeking God and continually seeking to be holy. And, of course, there's no competition between lighthouses. Uh, he's a graduate of the tri -C School of Preaching, and uh, he did a great job with that. And, uh, of course, it doesn't matter which school you go to. Just preach the word, and you're all right, <laughs> as they say. Um, I didn't necessarily see many prayer requests. Yeah, I don't know how you pin the prayers. I don't know how he does that, but uh, we can do an overall prayer for the sick and things, but uh, don't forget, Monday night, I guess, uh, uh, they'll be back with the Connect next week, and then we pray that our weekend will be a great one for God, and that we will um, be committed in our continued service to God in, as we worship Him on the first day of the week. Um, I'm going to give a minute just in case anyone has a specific prayer request. Sometimes they come in at the end. I don't see anything. So um, let us go to God in prayer as we conclude tonight. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for those that are your willing servants to share your word. Your word that we should desire. Help us to desire it even more. Help us help us to be convicted by that word. To be certain to be your servants. To see you not only as Savior, but also as our Lord. Father, we pray for those that are sick. Pray for those that are uh, are have lost loved ones that may be going through grief. We pray for comfort. Father, we pray for all the works that are going throughout the brotherhood, throughout the church, that they will be fruitful, and that they can have the things that they need to carry out that work, be with the church abroad, not only in this nation, but also in other countries as well. Father, we pray that you would help us and forgive us when we fall short. We ask this, your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And uh, as Brother Jonathan Jenkins would say, it is our prayer that you will go out and make your day, your weekend, a great one for God. Have a great night, everyone, and have a great day.